This Let's Talk with Anthony Fitzpatrick, actor, and in the second episode of the second series, we discuss the cultural changes of moving away from home and how language is important in the way that we say things, even if we're talking what may appear to be the same language. We, we were talking about sort of life, how life actually influences us, and mm. obviously you, you'd gone away from here, which uh, and, and was experiencing, you know, a multicultural yes. experience, oh, which yeah. I think is, is is quite important. It helped. How, how did that? How did you find that helped? Well, without putting anybody down or, or being negative about. The attitude here in Northern Ireland in, in drama is is one way, mm -hmm. and I went I went to, I went to England with that attitude, thinking this is I've learned this is what I've learned yeah. here that has to be the way it is, and when I got to drama school, it wasn't, mm. <laughs> and I had to change everything very very quickly, very quickly had to change my uh, everything attitude the whole attitude to, to learning the lines or. Yeah how you went about approaching the work, it was completely different. So I'm dubious, I would be very, with the young, with the young I'm always thinking about the younger people coming up now, it's their, it's their yes. turn. Yeah. And if they're getting shown how to do it wrong, yeah. and then they think that's the way it's supposed to be, and they go off to the real thing, and it's, well, it's like a slap in the face to them. Well, Why don't they teach them proper, yeah. properly? Well, one of the things I think that's quite interesting is that um, I, I've worked with different people in television, and we, there would be a language that you tend to yes. use. But one of the things that you, you start to have to do is adjust to the language, see whether the language you're talking about yeah. uh, is the same as what somebody from another country is yes. talking about when they're dealing with the same processes. Yes. And so the first part of the job is to try and assimilate the language to, yeah. to, so, you can op so you know that you're operating uh, on the same kind of method. Yeah. And I think that's something that, you know, I've experienced so many different people in so many different places and half the time, even when I'm teaching now, yeah. I'm trying to work out is the reason why these people don't understand what I'm saying, N not because they can't hear the language, but because their method of learning is, is different. different. Yes. And I have to try and find, I have to relate to them, yeah. you know, the, yeah. what I'm trying to actually say. That's so true. Would, would that be something? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, it, it's, it's hard. To, it's hard to put. Yeah. to put your finger exactly in order for the younger people who are learning they need to be shown at least the first process in the right way yeah. and to be to be the right attitude attitude's a big thing yeah. how how you, people turn on you very quickly if you're smart a smart aleck okay or or over cocky people say you're, you're cocky I've been called cocky thousands of times I'm not cocky you can't confuse cockiness and knowledge mm. do you know what you know what I mean it's yeah. uh, you either know or you don't yes yeah. and there's no in between and, and, I, I, and the difficulty with that knowledge at the moment is that people um, we live in a society that now either isn't educated or yes. is educated yes and if you're talking to someone that's not educated, they kind of go, well, anybody can write on a piece of paper. Correct. And you're kind of going, but hang on, we, we've got research that backs up yeah. what we're saying. <laughs> and they're kind of, yeah, but, you know, they don't believe that. Yeah. And then the difficulty with, with um, people that think they're overly educated yes. is that they'll try and blind you with science. Correct. And they can't Absolute. relate to the, Correct. At the right kind of level. Yes. And so, again, there's, this, there's no relation. That's yeah, well, that's, and that's everything. You have yeah. to have, there has to be a working relationship. Mm. Whether it's film or th theatre or amateur or professional, it doesn't matter. There has to be a, a cohesion. Mm. And I've had experience, I've seen it lots of times, of, you know, they're all pulling in different directions. Everybody's pulling in different directions. Yeah. And in my opinion, it's the same in, in theatre and film. There's one person in charge, one the director is in charge. If it's musical theatre, the director is in charge of how it all works, and the choreographer is in charge of the dancing. The musical director is in charge of the music. 
That's it. Mm. I have seen so many people arguing, I suppose, with their director mm -hmm. or their musical director or the choreographer. Arguing. Too many chiefs and not enough Indians. Yeah. And, and you, uh, although you, you, you're, you're trained as an actor, you, you've actually got experience as a as a stage director. Oh yes. Tell us a little bit about oh, I love, your, I, your I, process. I, I, I fell into it by accident because uh, I was doing the, the Bosco Drama Group with Jim McGuigan. We were doing Jesus Christ Superstar, which is my ultimate favorite musical ever. Mm -hmm. Still is and always will be. It's just a phenomenal show. Um, and we were, the Bosco had just been sort of, re, the Bosco Drama Group had revamped again. Mm -hmm. We had done Godspell in 1998, that was. And then we did Superstar in 2000. And I remember myself and Jim had lots of conversations. Jim and myself would talk a lot about how it should be done and what we can, how it costumes. But it ended up that I, I sort of took to it like a duck to water. I didn't, he wanted, he wanted, Jim wanted information from me about how we could go about doing the show because it's such a big show and it's a big thing and every, it's very difficult. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of fell into it by accident, but because it was Jesus Christ Superstar, which I knew, I know backwards, I could do, I could do it in my sleep. Right. You know, I know every part, I know every bit of orchestration, I know every line, I know what each each character would feel. For some, I don't know why I know that. I just, I just knew. Mm -hmm. I played Jesus, which, but then again, of course, that's a big undertaking if you play Jesus, because people have a an expectation, expectation. Yeah. of what Jesus should be. Yeah. As a, as a, as a, you know, so. I like to think of Superstar as people, you know, because there's a lot of, been, over the years since it came out first, there's, you know, people complaining about it and religious people going, mm. oh no, it's blasphemy, it's this, mm. it's that. And they're all entitled to their opinion. But Jesus is in no way messed with. He's still Jesus. Oh look, it's all around him's crazy. Everything mm. around him has gone bananas, but he is still this peaceful calm yeah. in the storm. Yeah. And, uh, so that's how the directing thing, that's where it came about. And then I started expanding a little bit and then I started doing, then I did a, a, a did, um, New Point Youth's hmm. summer show, which was Billy Lair. I don't know how long ago that was. And again, I just loved it because I was working with teenagers yeah. and they all, I could still relate to them because I was young enough to still be close to being, teen, you know, when yeah. I was a teenager, yeah. I could still remember. And I, and I loved it and I just loved it. And I've done a couple of things now with Killian Drama Group. I've done a couple of comedies with them. I just, I just, I like, yeah. I like direct, I, I just yeah. enjoy the process. It's, yeah. it's not about being in charge. It's just about knowing what yeah. you want to do and yeah. everybody pulling together and getting it done. But I love, I, again, I study everything about theater and film. I always, I, I think Spielberg's a superb director. Mm -hmm. um, I, I love uh, Trevor Nunn as a theater director. I think he's, Trevor Nunn did something with a musical that made me go, ah, that's, yeah. When he did Oklahoma in the National in, two th in the year 2000 with Hugh Jackman as Curly and Maureen Lipman was Aunt Eller. And whatever, because Trevor Nunn is a Shakespeare director mm. and he's a, the, RS, the RSC, he took the musical and made it real. If, yeah. I remember Hugh Jackman had said that he made them come out and instead of coming out, uh, you know, Curly coming out at the start going, oh, what a beautiful morning. Trevor Nunn said, say the words as dialogue first. Yeah. So Hugh Jackman said this when they were rehearsing and everybody had to do this. They spoke the words of the songs as if they were dialogue. Yeah. And then put the music to them. Okay. And to me, that, that version of Oklahoma at the, at the National is the perfect exa example of how a musical should be in mm. this day and age. Yeah. Now yeah. in the 21st century. Because it's, it's completely different. I mean, if you look at a, a, a musical from the seventies, yeah, it's it's old hat, and, and, yeah. and their attitudes are old, yeah. and it's. But this whole new approach to it made it real. So yeah. I thought oh, this is brilliant. Yeah. So as a music, when I do musical theatre, I try to make it as real. You know, I don't just burst into song for mm. no apparent reason. Yeah. There has to be a reason why that person's going to burst into song. But so isn't that the case with everything? That it's like um, we, we discussed this the last time, but that there has to be a reason for. Literally, why you're there? Yeah. Oh, yes. It's not that you just suddenly popped into yeah. thin air. <laughs> That's right. You know, you're there for. Yeah. It's the, you know, it is a musical, so you're expecting yeah. people to be singing. Singing, absolutely. But it, it was always the way they led in the song. There was always yeah. a word. You know, there was always a line first to give you the hint. Here comes the, the song. song. Absolutely. And it just all that old hat stuff yeah. drove me insane. 
And now there's like the, the theatre has come on leaps and bounds in the last thirty years. Yeah. Not just technically, but artistically. Yeah. Uh, people's knowledge of what's going on or what should be going on has come to the fore, and I and I'd love to see. It. I, I it's brilliant to see that. But I wish everybody would catch yeah. up. We have more on the way, so please subscribe to this channel and check out the link below if you'd consider becoming a patron to help us keep making more content. Thanks for watching. Thank you.